Hello, we're back. In episode 18, I said we'd be talking about the invader port to the Atari 2600 using Batari Basic in the basic programming language. What looks like the official homepage for Batari Basic seems to no longer be up to date, and since I'm using an IDE with Batari Basic, I'll be showing you some more current sites related to developing with it. The official page for Batari Basic has some links here. And if you go to the Random Terrain, Atari Memories, Visual Batari Basic Guide, you can download Visual Batari Basic and Batari Basic the program. Once you install the Visual Batari Basic IDE and unzip Batari Basic somewhere on your computer, you'll need to download the Stella Atari 2600 emulator and make sure it's working. After that, you can run the Visual Batari Basic IDE and under the Settings tab, just point to the locations for the Stella Emulator executable and the 2600 Basic executable. Now you can create a basic program for the Atari 2600 using BASIC instead of 6502 assembly language, which was the Atari 2600's native development language. And the best place to look for information on how to do this is back under Atari Memories, Atari Basic Commands. So let's take a look at the code for Invader in Batari Basic in the IDE. We'll open my project folder. and double click on the latest version to bring it up in the editor. Visual Batari Basic also has some tools built in. You can choose from the Atari 2600's palette from here. We have the sprite animator and editor. A graphics converter, I have not tried this out. There is a music and sound editor, a sound generator, and several other tools built in. Now all we have to do is click on the run button to see it run in the emulator. This version of Invader is huge for me, as the Atari 2600 was the first video game machine that I owned all the way back in 1977, and it was responsible for me wanting to create video games in the first place, and ultimately getting a job that lasted over 20 years in the video game industry. I have also been learning 6502 assembly code to eventually create a version of Invader in assembly for the Atari 2600, but that's still a work in progress. I have created a 6502 assembly language version of Invader for the Commodore 64 that you can see back in episode 10, and a version for the Commodore VIC-20 that you will see in an upcoming episode. But the Atari 2600 is a whole different beast. I'll include some links to show you just how difficult it is to create something for the Atari 2600 in assembly. Kyle over at 8Blit explains it best. I'll leave a link to his site. Now we'll take a look at Invader running on real Atari hardware from 1977. So here's the Atari 2600 in all its plastic and wood grained glory. I'm using a Harmony cartridge in order to play it on my 2600 as it allows you to copy your 2600 game binary file to a micro SD card and insert it into the Harmony cartridge in order to play it on a real Atari 2600. Sorry for the terrible reception, as these old machines 
broadcast onto a television channel and were subject to interference. I have something else to show you. While working at 3DO from the mid-90s until the early 2000s, I had the pleasure of working with several original programmers of the Atari 2600. These guys were kind enough to sign some of my original Atari cartridges. I have a Yars Revenge, an ET, and a Raiders of the Lost Ark, signed by none other than Howard Scott Warshaw. You need to read his book, Once Upon an Atari. I'll leave a link in the description. It's a must read. I also have a Star Voyager, a Dragonfire, a Moon Sweeper, a Riddle of the Sphinx, and a video pinball, all signed by Bob Smith. And a Pac-Man, signed by Todd Fry. A strategic space combat game, signed by Rob Zadibble. And a Taz, signed by Steve Woida. These are absolute treasures to me. So that about wraps up episode 19 of my journey in game programming. Please like and subscribe and leave any comments or suggestions you may have that could make these a better experience. Next episode, I will be showing a port of Invader to the Sony PSP, programmed in Lua using the Lua Player Euphoria software. Until then, bye. I'll talk to you next time.